Hello, in this video we're going to talk about function composition. So we begin by letting f be a function from set A to set B and g be a function from set B to set C and these functions are defined as follows. f is the set of ordered pairs 1 comma 3, 2 comma 4, and 0 comma 3 and the function g is defined by the ordered pairs 3 comma 7 and 4 comma 8. Our task here is to find g of f and so this means the function uh, g composed with f. So we begin, we'll begin by looking at f and so when we work on function composition we start over here uh, with the rightmost function that's written. Another way of writing this would be to write it uh, in layers, so to speak. So f of g, or excuse me, g of f of x, where x is any value from the domain of f. Okay, so let's begin. Uh, the first domain value that we want to look at is 1. So we want to ask ourselves what happens when we compose g of f of 1. In other words, we ask ourselves what happens when we do f of 1. Well, looking at our rule for the function f, 1 gets mapped to 3. So we can replace this uh, business in parentheses here. Instead of f of 1, we'll call that 3. Now we have to look at what g does to 3. Well, when we look over here, we see that g takes the element 3 and maps it to 7. So g of 3 equals 7. We can look at this uh, pictorially. So if we were to draw our function a, and a has the following elements in it, 1, 2, and 0 and then we were to draw our function for b. b has the elements in it 3 and 4. And then we were to draw our function c. c has the elements in it 7 and 8. And what is uh, f doing? Well, f is a function from a to b. And what is g doing? g is a function from b to c. So when we want to know what happens to the element 1 as we trace it through this composition of functions, well, we say f takes the element 1 and maps it over here to 3. And then g takes the element 3 and maps it over here to 7. And so if we look at what happens to element 1 when we put it through all these functions, in goes a 1 and out comes a 7, which is exactly what we've said over here. So the element or the ordered pair uh, is 1, 7, meaning that g of f of 1 gives us 7. Let's do another one. Let's look at g of f of 2. So we ask ourselves what happens to 2 under the map of f. In other words, f of 2, what is that? Well, we look at the definition of f and it tells us that 2 gets mapped to 4. So we can replace this f of 2 with a 4. Pictorially, 2 gets mapped to 4. Now we want to know what happens to uh, 4 under the map g. In other words, g of 4 is 8. So pictorially, 4 gets mapped to 8. The ordered pair there would be in goes a 2 and out comes an 8. Lastly, we want to know what happens when we apply g of f to the element 0. In other words, f of 0, we want to look at what happens there. 0 gets mapped to 3 and that's because it's defined up here in our function f. Now we need to know what happens to 3 under the map g. g of 3 equals 7. And we've already written that down here. So this means that the ordered pair would be 0, 7. 
So we notice some interesting things. Uh, we can talk about injectivity and surjectivity, uh, whether this is on to or one to one. We can also look at if the inverse map is a function and you can see in this case it's not. When we hit the 3, if we were trying to look at uh, f inverse here, we have a problem because that would not be a function. So there is an inverse map, but there's not an inverse function.